Hi, let's go for a ride. This time in Silver Mountain, Idaho. Welcome to another Black Bikes Bike Park Review. Oh, oh, If my visit to Silver Mountain needed a tagline, it would be, it ain't over till it's over. It started out a little rough. I've met up with fellow YouTuber Jim from The Shreddist. Here's a link to his channel. He had mechanicals. He was battling a slow leak on the rear tire. Got a flat. No, already? I pretty early had a relatively soft spill and a little later a pretty bad spill, which is where my hurt neck is from. That second bigger spill led to my brake hose of my front brake to disconnect from the lever. It just got ripped straight out. I twisted my my cable all the way and now it's just ripped out of there. Oh, shit. <laughs> so I had to kind of finish the last run on my rear brake only. And it ended up with him having to be somewhere mid-afternoon. So all of it got a little cut short. And then I found myself having a beer after the ride and I thought, you know, no. I felt tensing up. I felt like it's not good to be resting just yet. I kind of need to keep going a little so I won't be too sore the next day. I still was plenty sore, but you know, I've tried. So I went back up and had a couple more runs and it was pretty cool. Because I'm not gonna lie, Silver Mountain. I really like that place. It was a lot of fun. I didn't do my best riding. I still had a great day. The Silver Mountain sports what used to be the longest gondola ride in the world. I don't know where they built a longer one in the meantime, and now it's only the longest gondola ride in North America, but it's a 3.1 mile ride that takes you 25 minutes to go all the way in the top, and you go from 2300 to 5700 feet. So you go 3400 feet up, that's a kilometer. But obviously what goes around comes around, you get to go all that down. It's super long runs from the top to the bottom, which is gorgeous. The trails all spill you out right at the river. And then it's roughly a one and a half mile pedal back to the gondola village. And Jim told me that this is one of the reasons why people don't like that park. Oh, that didn't suck. Because you have to ride back. And I get it if you're like on a super heavy downhill rig, but man, it's like a mile and a half. That's just crazy talk. Because, first of all, I don't mind pedaling a mile and a half, obviously. But that's not my point. There is an actual goodness to this. And that's your leg muscles are holding on. They're working the terrain. They're being used in a very specific way as you shred down downhill tracks. Pedaling moves them in a different way. So this is actually relaxing, keeps the juices flowing. Also, the nice part about that is you cross the parking lot when you get to the gondola village. So you come by your car basically on every run. It's pretty cool. Other than the gondola, there is one chair lift up there. They call it chair three. Oh, you gotta be quick on that one. That thing's a blast from the past. Sorry about that. And I promptly botched loading my bike onto it because that thing doesn't slow down. Oh, come on. Yeah. It's a learning curve. For the gondola, you have to load in your bike into one open gondola, and then you have to do like a mad dash around to grab the gondola that's before that one. So then at the top, you can get out of your gondola and wait for your bike to come, and then you unload it out of the gondola again. It's all up a little, just, you know, they're making it work. All of it feels a little self-made, but it totally works. It's not as polished or manicured as, let's say, Big Sky with, you know, only the latest and greatest lifts and stuff, but all of it absolutely works and it's a lot of fun. The bottom station of what they call the Gondola Village has pretty much everything. There's a bunch of dining and coffee and whatnot options. There's a gift shop, obviously. The only thing that I was missing was a bike shop. Turns out that's on like halfway the way that you have to pedal back from the trails. The excellent Excelsior Cycles 
which just fixed me up with my front brake earlier. The bike shop that they have there is actually quite something. I found it kind of hard to pinpoint how many trails there really are, since there's a lot of variations to the trails. The trail branches off into two, three different ones, usually of different difficulty. They claim they have seven easy trails, 12 blue ones, 17 black ones and three double blacks. It's a lot of trails and a lot of them are really long runs. I found the signage somewhat on the easy side, like blacks are black. Double blacks definitely are double black. Oh boy. All of it is a little more gnarly. Okay. That's what he was talking about when he called this trail a pile of rocks. That might have to do with the fact that it is again the end of a long dry season and everything is really blown out, but the trails are demanding. They do have a skills park, but that's like all the way on top of the mountain. And at this point you have like 40 minutes of decent. I mean, I guess you can take a gondola back down, but there's also a skills park on the bottom, which is actually pretty cool. It's relatively large and has a bunch of jump lines and drop-ins and stuff and berms to practice on and rollers and doubles. It's a lot of fun. The terrain of the trails goes from basically a pile of shale rock all the way to loam, to dirt. It's good variety, and I'm pretty sure the entire resort has amazing dirt once it rains. Okay, now I see you again. The map I found isn't always 100% where it should be, but you're not gonna get lost because all the trails spit you out at the same opening that lead to that river path. That was a good run. Let's see if we can get another one. One more tune. Their summer schedule is different than most. They run their lifts like all the way into sometimes 7 p.m. depending on the season. And I think I read some signs that sometimes there is even some night riding going on. So they don't close down at 5 p.m. like everybody else does. They run their lifts relatively long and they also start at 10 a.m. The scenery is... Oh, this is quite delightful. Honestly, mostly irrelevant because you're 90% in the dense woods, which is awesome because it's always shaded. There's always foliage above you. You're not going to get sunburn in that resort. It's not an Idaho. It doesn't suck. The lift ticket for an adult for the day is 40 bucks. The amount of trails, the amount of riding you can get in, and the fact that they run their lifts longer than most resorts I make lied. those 40 bucks absolutely <laughs> worthwhile in my humble opinion. They have a bunch of different bike rental options. Most of it is Norco. They have three or four different bicycles all the way from trail bikes to downhill rigs. Prices range from 69 for adult bikes to 89. Kids bikes are available for 45 a day. There's a full armor package for 25 bucks, or you pay 15 for just a full face, which is not mandatory. There is boondocking in the parking lot. They ask for $15 a night. There's a little envelope thing that you put the money in and then you get like a little slip that you put on your dashboard and then you can park there overnight for 15 bucks. I did the thing again where I drove off site for 20 minutes and found amazing free wild camping in the national forest real close by. I've seen a water park sign, not entirely sure what that is. They don't drown you in other activities like whatever, boccia ball or putt putts or zip lines or something like that. It's a purpose-built resort you go there to ride. Overall I personally wouldn't call it a beginner resort for a couple of reasons. One being that the trails are pretty challenging for the most part and the other thing is the trails are long. There is not really much in terms of reconsideration. From top to bottom the run is, depending on your stamina, your riding abilities and the trails, between half an hour and 45 minutes. So once you drop in you're invested. You're on the mountain and there's only one way down. But if you're looking for challenging and long rides, I can really recommend Silver Mountain. They're not as polished, they're not as manicured, they're not as pinky out, they're not as posh, they're also not as expensive, and they definitely make up for it with charm. 
The whole place has this small town family run vibe to it, which I really appreciate. If I lived close by there, I'd definitely have a season pass. Silver Mountain, endless runs, challenging, straightforward, no fuss. Great gondola, fun chairlift. I'd say check it out. It's a good place to ride. So yeah, I guess that's it for this bike park review. Thanks for watching and pedal hard.